$3,000 plus microtransaction in a $60 game. I wonder what game he's talking about. The opportunity to spend over three grand in Call of Duty, Stadia continuing to seem silly, Blizzard then lost their co-founder, Microsoft have a big plan for gaming, Nintendo are catching heat for a design defect, and far more as a Disney investor eyes up Activision, Pokemon moves west, and gaming's new record prize pool. Okay, that's a lot of shit. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Roundup. This is a real meaty one, so whack that sub button, whack that bell, and let's get into Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and money. So this is a real spicy one. According to a YouTuber called E. Coli Espresso, it would cost $1,324 to purchase all items in Call of Duty 4's black market. Now, if you include the black market tiers, then that goes up to $1,812. And he notes that the first update added items that cost $345 in total. Wait a second here. So the I each item itself is worth this much fucking money. Well, I, I want to just step back for a second here. Black Ops 4, true cost. I, I want to step back. I want to listen to this. We need to make it a minute. No, because I want to listen to what the fuck he's saying. YouTuber called E. Coli Espresso, it would cost $1,324 to purchase all items in Call of Duty 4's black market. Now, if you include the black market tiers, then that goes up to $1,812. And he notes that the first update added items that cost $345 in total, and the second one was a bit higher than that, but that each update since then has been smaller, but the updates have came much, much faster. He also runs some maths on the loot boxes. There are 1,316 items currently available in the reserve system, with you getting three items per case. Now, assuming you get no dupes, that won't happen, then the minimum cost would be $675. Add that up with everything else, and you're at $2,487. But, in the worst case, if you constantly Jesus got dupes, Christ. even with their system that re-rolls every third dupe into a new item, Okay. Well... It Wait, every third dupe? So, like, the first two, you're just fucked? Is this, like, some sort of, like, a another type of excitement mechanism? That they... Wh why not just give you a re-roll every single time? I That's why I quit? It's not the point. You don't have to buy them. Well, I mean, like, here's the thing is that they wouldn't put them in the game if they didn't want people to buy them. So what they do is they make the in-game skins look like dog shit, and then they make the micro they make the microtransaction skins look really cool. Now, in my mind, spending $3,000 on Call of Duty is stupid. But for other people that are stupid, they think that's a great idea. I mean, I spend a lot of time playing WoW, and I'm spending a lot of time and instead of money. I mean, what's really the difference, ultimately? Uh, it, it's just this is the way that people do things. Cost three times that, and that is two thousand and twenty-five dollars, okay. and that brings your worst case total up to three thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight dollars, and that will only grow as the game is updated. Now, it's worth keeping in mind that Espresso says his data is incomplete, and there are issues with maybe some things being missed or being counted twice. But even with a few hundred dollar margin for error, it is an eye opener. Now, there are titles that are free to play that have similar things here, but they get a bit of a pass for being free to play, not cost. $60. Players can often intuit the differences between a developer needing to keep the lights on and having their, you know, microtransactions in their free-to-play game, and then this, which just looks like clear corporate greed. Yeah, it's just Activision ridiculous. Activision attempting to blend live service development and monetization with the traditional yeah. Call of Duty format is gaining favor with nobody. Now, it is also true that there's no way Activision expects every player to buy all of these items. That would be an unreasonable thing They hope thing for to it, say. though. However, Come microtransactions on. do rely on the abuse of whales to reach higher profit margins. And yeah, with the sheer sure amount of cosmetics being added for sale, it seems like they are both casting a wide net and sharpening their harpoons. Next up, we've got a little slice of Stadia with their product director leaving some questionable statements on an AMA. So first, he was asked what would happen to the games that people own if the service ceased. And he responded in a baffling manner, defending digital and streaming, saying, okay. Moving to the cloud is scary. I felt the same way when music was transitioning from files to streaming. I still okay. have all my old CDs in the garage, although Who it's doesn't? hard to find a CD player these days. Oh, come on. Smiley face. 
he then says that the same thing has happened with movies, with photos, and with documents, and that it's all great, and that eventually our games will be safe in the cloud okay. and we'll feel great about it. <laughs> now, he largely ignores the actual problem here. With photos and documents <coughs> on the cloud, that's a backup. That's like a usability thing without DRM. With music, he sort of misses the point as well. He compared it to physical media, saying that people have adopted digital formats and thus CD players are rarer. Now, sure, yeah. people listen to music digitally, but most of that is either through streaming, through a subscription, or by buying DRM-free now. Okay. Stadia's market is purchasing DRM-protected games outright through their service. It's not that, so it's not really a good example. Now, a user asked, what if Stadia shut down? And on that, he said this. Nothing in life is certain. We're committed to making Stadia a success. And you know what? I'm sure that's what the other product directors at Google said before their projects ended up in Google's absolutely massive graveyard. Now I mean, like, but let's be real. Okay, guys, let's be real. That's true. This guy, see, the problem this guy, the problem this guy has is he gave an, uh, he gave an actual answer. See, these people don't want actual answers. What, what would happen if Stadia is discontinued? The odds are if Stadia got discontinued, then Google would be falling apart, right? Or Google would have canceled the service because it would make them look extremely bad for them to, discontin to discontinue a service that people in have invested a ton of money into, right? It would make them look like fucking idiots. And also it would make a ton of people mad. So yes, if Google falls apart, if the country goes into a civil war, if there's a nuclear holocaust, there's a million different ways that, yeah, of course nothing in life is certain. And he says this, right? But the problem is that people take that and they extrapolate it to saying, oh, well, if we cancel the project because we're not making enough money off of it for some reason, then you're going to lose all your fucking games. And so that's the issue, right? Is he gave a genuine answer, but he gave it in a way that people were expecting to hear something else. Uh, okay, let, let's go the rest of this. Now, in his defense, people are quick to attack... Google shuts down services all the time. Yeah, they do, but they don't shut down services that people invested a lot of money into. Like like, like Google Hangout, not Google. What was, the, what was the Google Facebook? What was that thing called? Yeah, I, I mean... Uh, what, what, what is that? Google, Google Plus. Yeah, there's no Google Plus anymore, right? But people didn't invest money into Google Plus. So it's a completely different paradigm. Stadia for this, while other games with DRM do suffer similar issues, including your entire Steam library. Okay. Although at least with that, Valve That's true. have, uh, when they've been asked about it, vaguely claimed that the games will still be available. Not in a legally binding way, but that's what they've said anyway. Okay. We can't really get the same from Stadia, given that customers, well, rely on the Stadia hardware to run their Stadia games. Uh, never mind the fact that his response here just brushes the whole thing under the rug. Now, on okay. to the next issue, which is just how much data Stadia can use. So it's going to be limited by data and speed caps by your ISP, especially when it's streaming up to 4K 60 FPS, which will be about 16 gigs an hour. Now, okay. his response to that again was hand-waving, saying that ISPs have adapted in the past, particularly to YouTube, and that he expects it all to continue. And to be fair, there's really not much he can say here as the bandwidth usage is necessary. But that said, it's definitely going to impact their usability in areas with poor internet connections, and it might actually impact Stadia as a business because a part of their business model is charging $9.99 for 4K60. So just so I know for a fact, like Stadia is basically Netflix for games, right? Or Spotify for games, kind of. Is that right? Like what what is the what is the analogy that works? Uh yeah, just a second here. Uh no, it's Steam on crack. Wait. So it's just Steam? No, it's not. Okay. Steam, Steam, but shittier. Okay. All right. It, it's like the boring. Yeah, I, I don't even fucking know, man. Like, th this is actually kind of confusing. It, it's like Steam, but you pay for it. Cloud gaming. Woo, we'll see. All right. 
which seemingly a fair amount of people won't be able to utilize. Now, beyond that, he also compared Stadia Pro to Xbox Live Gold or to PlayStation Plus instead of Netflix, which I think is Netflix is more the model people would want from this. And what he meant by that is that, yes, you're able to claim some free games, but the thing you're actually paying for, that $9.99 or whatever a month, that is you paying for a better experience, like with Xbox Live Gold. Okay. Now, in this front, he said that the free games work like this. If you've got an active sub, you can claim that month's games. But if you drop off and come back after a few months, you'll have access to the games that you've claimed, but not the ones that you have missed. Now, in addition to that, he mentioned a laundry list of features what that Stadia will fuck? have at launch, like friends, partying, and voice chat with achievements, family sharing, what mod support, fuck? and more stuff being planned for later. But still, I've got to admit okay. that paying $9.99 a month to gain access to a platform at decent enough quality uh, to then have to buy games at full price, that just does not seem like a good deal to me. But I guess, being a PC gamer, I'm not their market. I want to know what you think on that. Regardless, I will report back once our Stadia Founders Edition arrives in a few months. Yeah, on, we'll though, see Microsoft about CEO that, dude. I mean, talked in an earnings call about Xbox. I, I, I can't say that I'm excited about Stadia. Like, it, just, just play the fucking games. Like, you just buy the games on Steam. I think Steam is fine. There's nothing wrong with Steam that I'm thinking to myself, I can't wait until they make this. Now, I understand, you know, Henry Ford said that uh, if you ask people what they'd wanted, they'd say they want faster horses. So maybe Stadia is going to be this amazing thing that's going to make everything better. But my, my guess is that it's not. I, I just, I don't think so. Uh, you don't need a Biffy computer to play them. Uh, it's for casuals with shitty computers. I think that processing, like, like people in general now have better computers, I would say, because it's cheaper to make a good computer. Like, back in the day, it was pretty expensive. It cost a lot of money to make a good computer, but nowadays you can make one for, like, fucking $600. It's cheap as hell future with the company. Okay. Now, in the financial results, Xbox have taken somewhat of a hit, with hardware revenue being down 48%, gaming revenue in general being down 10%, but they are up 14% on their Xbox Live MAUs, hitting 65 million. Now, software and subscriptions seem to be making quite a bit at the end of the console generation. It's a big part of their, well, their revenue. Now, okay. in the earnings call, they said that the gaming market is growing and that because of their business model with Game Pass, their streaming tech and Xbox Live, they're positioned to do well in that bigger market. And he talks about how their architectural developments are synergistic, basically saying that xCloud is a hero workload on top of Azure, which is kind of like they're you is know. this some rationalizing why xbox sucks dick like are, are we basically listening to that like I, i'm sorry but like let's just get this out of the way uh, okay okay all right here's the thing right i said this like yesterday xbox sucks because it has no good fucking it has no good exclusive games like besides halo that they ran into the fucking ground nobody cares about any of the xbox exclusives who gives a fuck like why are you gonna spend it costs it didn't it cost originally more money than the ps4 too and nobody was gonna play it man who cares it's like playstation 4 like can't you play online for free or some shit and yeah, I remember the network was down for like a month or two months or something like that. But back then, you'd get what you pay for. Not anymore. Oh, they've changed it. Okay, I, I guess now it's been changed. I, the last time I did console gaming is back in 2005. And that was the last time anybody should have done console gaming. No big data center and um, sort of cloud stuff. Basically, the point is, for them, they're putting all of this development work into cloud services, and that's all okay. basically compounding, with Azure being a very solid framework for xCloud, and that all feeding into the other Microsoft Cloud platforms. And on this one, I've got to agree, it makes a lot of sense. One thing is pretty clear. They are focused on games and services with as wide a net as is possible, which seems to be the right play for a company with a setup like theirs. And notably one that is very different to how Sony are currently running the show. Next, though, we've got to hop over to Blizzard Entertainment, who are losing one of their co-founders. Frank Pierce, Here one of the lesser go. known names at the company, has decided to leave Blizzard Entertainment. Now, for years, he was oh, their chief boy. development officer and executive producer on World this of Warcraft up until Mists of Pandaria. All he right. wasn't really a figure in the public life. Yeah, that this was guy left and he Morhan, came back. But he was one of the co-founders of the company. Now, it might look like many of these people are jumping ship with yes. Morheim leaving a short 
short time ago. It does look worth like that. In mind, these guys have been there for decades. They're getting on a bit. If they want to try a new project, now's the time to do it. They can't really wait another 15 years. And plus, you know, making time for family makes a lot of sense for somebody who's that age and has done really well in their career. But that said, what does it mean for Blizzard? What is the raid you could make into it? Well, it's hard to say. You see, here's the thing. Blizzard's underperformance has been the norm for years now, even under Mike Morheim's leadership. And that's even if it was less them struggling and more that they could have done better with what they had. I mean, just look at the cancelled Diablo 3 expansion, the cancelled StarCraft game, Overwatch's slow development, yeah. Overwatch 2's slow development, the cancelled mobile game, Heroes of the Storm, the... The actual coming out mobile game, that's the best one. Reboot of Diablo 4 and their big PR mess of recent times. Something there does need to change, I do think that. But it's equally right to be suspicious of Activision driving that change, given yeah. how they've monetized their other properties and what we've just mentioned yeah. with Call of Duty. So overall, we will have Especially to wait with and mobile see games. till BlizzCon to see really what Blizzard have planned for the future, but it's worth a little bit of suspicion. Next, let's hop over to Nintendo, who are currently facing a class action lawsuit in the USA wait, because of Joy-Con drift. An issue where, after significant use, Joy-Con sticks are beginning to drift, no longer resetting to the original location, causing unwanted movement. Nintendo will fix- Bro, I have- I like- Nintendo's had this fucking problem for like 15 years. It's been like 15 fucking years this has been going on. Like, I- I- I'm sorry to say, but like, I remember this used to be a fucking- this used to be a fucking thing. I have- I have GameCube controllers behind me that do this today. And those game- I mean, like, yes, the truth is that, yes, those GameCube controllers I've had for over 10 years, but I'm not surprised that they're stopped working. Yeah, planned obsolescence. You guys know about that, right? Planned obsolescence. That's whenever the developers and, like, the, uh, the producers of these different types of products plan for them to break at a certain period of time so they can have you ready to buy their next product. That's why whenever you go to the thrift store... You see the same electronics from the 90s and the early 2000s and nothing from after that because all that shit's broken because it was programmed to break them out of warranty, but it will be at the user's yeah. cost. Now, the lawsuit claims that Nintendo are acting fraudulently and deceptively, and that they were aware of this defect through their own mm. testing and consumer complaints, but did not make the fact known. Now, this is by far not the first class action lawsuit to hit consoles. In the other generation, the old one, we had Sony, uh, you know, they removed other OS, that feature from PS3 to combat piracy, and after eight years, the lawsuit was settled to the tune of $3.75 million, a drop in the bucket. Clearly, Though okay. for this one, they should just uh, do what Apple did. It's a design defect. So just like the recent Apple keyboards, Nintendo should offer a warranty extension program yeah. and cover the issue at their own cost because it shouldn't be happening. Next, though, let's no. hop over to Quick Fire and get some interesting topics out of the way. Okay, despite somewhat stagnant player numbers, Dota has maintained its real strength this year: the dedication of its players. The International 2019, through Valve's crowdfunding efforts, has broken the 30 million dollar mark for its prize pool, making it the largest tournament prize pool in I should play history. Dota. No other tournament comes close, except for last year's International, with a pool of $25 million. Yeah, As to I... how this will continue to grow, well, I guess it's just that more players are putting yeah, money play in Dota. year after year because of better offerings from their battle pass. As it just turns out, about offering it. what their users perceive to be a good this product be really good. in a good way will get you more sales, even this if is only really 25% good. is going to the prize pool. Well, that's what a cool hundred. I bet it's a really fun game. Spent on the battle pass, which is quite. I'm already indeed. enjoying Next it. Next up for Quickfire, though, numbers. we've got Tencent and Pokemon, who are teaming up to create a new Pokemon game for mobile. The developer involved, Teamy Studio, are responsible for Call of Duty Mobile and Arena of Valor, and they'll be creating this new game. There's a I don't know why they don't make a Pokemon MMO. Like, I, I really don't fucking know why. You take the old GameCube model, or not Game Boy, a Game Boy model of, like, the top-down walking around bullshit, right? Where, like, every Super Nintendo game, and you just make that an MMO. That's all you need to fucking do. And for all these times, they keep doing... what, what They have to come up with every single fucking color in the entire alphabet, and I'm tired of it. They've got red. They've got ruby. Don't they have, like, what's another? They've got rouge. I mean, how many other fucking versions? Are they've got aqua, blue, turquoise. They're going to run out of colors. They're just going to run out of fucking colors. And they've got to figure out something better than that. Man, it's like, I, 
I, I think the last time I got excited for a Pokemon game was in like fucking 2000 and I like like six or something. It's just they keep rehashing the same stuff over and over. They need to make it a, an MMO. It'd be fucking awesome. Job listing that wants a Western creative director with AAA experience. So what this game is going to be will be really quite a mystery given that. What we do know is that the Pokemon company are going extremely hard on mobile off the back of Pokemon Go with uh, Pokemon Masters, Sleep and Home all being announced this year. It's a smart move to tie all of these in with Sword and Shield leading the push as the first mainline entry for the Switch. So overall, okay. it seems like Pokemon franchise revenue will only continue to increase massively. Next, though, we've got a good story. We have Ubisoft joining Epic in supporting Blender. So Epic, through their Mega Grants program, recently gave $1.2 million to Blender, which is an open source 3D uh, creation tool. Ubisoft now also came on board, but as a corporate gold partner, which seems to be to the tune of $30,000 euros a year and overall i just think it's great to see well, that's a lot of open money source software being supported by the large companies wow. every cent okay. that goes into blender will improve that tool and that will improve it for the yeah, many smaller great. 3d artists and game developers who also use it even if their motive is so that you know those companies can use blender without paying a license fee like they would have to do for other software it still is having a good trickle down effect and then next we've got an interesting one because Activision's share price has been dropping pretty steadily. It's not in a great place, and there's speculation that it could. Let, be let's see. Let me see. Um, oh, I put Catavision. Never mind. Okay, just a second. All right, let me look here. Uh this is. I mean, it doesn't really seem like it's. I mean, if you look at it from there, it doesn't look good. But from there, it looks good. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, okay? Let me say that. Taken over. I mean, I don't believe it too much, but... Industry trend. To yeah, that's what we talked about before. ...who owns both Activision and Disney stock, they think Disney should buy it and that it would support their goals. This is being widely reported on right now, but I think currently it amounts to, well, not much. Just an investor's comment. So there's really no point in going into it unless things were to actually progress a little bit further. That would be great. Can't you guys imagine if we have Disney? We can put Goofy and WoW. We get to have Goofy and WoW. We can have Mickey Mouse in the game. I mean, holy shit, it's going to be great. Yeah, Disney WoW movies. And so you get to have the same fucking stupid ass plots as the Disney movies that are designed for six year olds. And, you know, then it's about Arthas and somehow, uh, you know, they, they do Frozen 2. And instead of Elsa, it's Arthas. Actually, it's a great idea. Fuck yeah. So there you go. That is another episode of The Roundup. Let me know what you think about the topics we have covered today, especially that Black Ops 4 stuff. Is it okay to offer that much in the way of cosmetics to have such a high potential ticket price? Well, I suppose less ticket price and more massive gift shop after the ride. And also on Stadia, is that up your alley? Is it not? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? What do you think about ownership in a world with things like Stadia where you don't even own the hardware? I'd love to know. And with that, subscribe, ring that bell. Helps me out a lot. Thank you very much for watching okay. this channel okay. and okay. i will see you next time okay 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 all right listen okay uh sylvanas and jaina are disney princesses yeah sylvanas would be a great disney princess so how much money let me see here how much how much money does it take to get everything in apex how much does it take to get everything in how many apex packs do you need minimum to unlock everything so that is total of how much money is this? Like, just tell me how much money. 919. So how much money is that? Like, somebody just tell me. I, I forgot, like, what the what the breakdown is for the packs and, like, how much money. 919. Like, but how much? more than ten thousand dollars okay so one apex pack is one dollar oh really okay so then it's only no it's only like maybe like fourteen hundred dollars because you get free packs whenever you buy them in bulk yeah you only have to spend fourteen hundred dollars in apex that's not even that much 
Yeah, it's a free-to-play game, too. Uh, don't forget about that as well. Um, not interested in Stadia, not even a little. Let me guess, Activision is acting like themselves. Those AAA life service games are not more uh, than pay $60 to be allowed to pay even more. Don't buy Stadia or Activision games. Another day in gaming. Another greedy publisher's dance around. Another day to keep my slim wallet closed. Triple dot. And he has a communist raven as his, uh, as his picture here. Let's look at this right here. That's a communist raven. This raven never buys microtransactions. He doesn't have any of that. Yeah, it, it's, it, the reason it's communist is because it's red. Uh, if you're still playing Black Ops 4, I don't feel sorry for you. It's like you're being abused at this point. Does anybody, like, unironically play Call of Duty anymore? Like, I can see, you know, I can see the 12, you know, the the 14-year-old Kyles of the world, right? No, n nobody does. Yeah, I, let me see on Twitch, right? This isn't the best way to look at it, but let, let's just look on Twitch, and we'll see who is playing COD. Call of Duty. Black Ops 4. 13,000 viewers. That's like, that's 12,000 more than I had expected. No, really, that's actually good. Yeah, Call of Duty, yeah, there it is, 13, that's, really, that, that's a lot. I mean, usually whenever, uh, you know, there's like nothing else really going on in WoW, like WoW can go all the way down to that. Honestly, it's pretty fucking sad, but it's true. Like Path of Exile, by the way, is doing really fucking well, even though the game's been out and the, the season's been out for a while. Like, this new season's really fucking good. Uh, I, I haven't played it yet, but I've watched it, and it seems a lot more exciting than the, than the previous one. Okay, yeah, RuneScape's still better. Yeah, oh, oh well, the, the point that I'm trying to make right here is that a lot of these, uh, y you know, these games, these, like, new AAA games, I think they spend too much money developing the game. Like, they're just spending too much money on the game. That's really all there is to it. They're wasting all of this money. Uh, do they? Yeah, I, I think that they do. Uh, what do you think about WoW adopting the same system as EVE Online? Free expansions? No, they're not going to do that. Uh, I, I think that you should have to pay for expansions. It's not a big deal.